Today we're talking about a huge Windsor landmark that no longer exists. And when I say huge, I mean maybe the biggest ever. And I'm joined by Tim Cornett. And if you don't know Tim's face, I'm sure that you've seen some of his photography. Tim has worked for the Windsor Spitfires, taking pictures for over a decade now. And before that, Tim took thousands of photos of local Windsor area bands and any other bands that happen to come through the area. And that ties into what we're going to be talking about today, an event that happened in the summer of 1985 at St. Clair College at a music venue called Griffin Hollow, also known as the St. Clair College Amphitheater. I'd like to welcome Tim Cornett. Hello, Tim. Mike, it's my pleasure, and I thank you very much for doing this. The reason that I wanted to talk to you today was about Griffin Hollow. Yes. And some people know it as the St. Clair College Amphitheater. Yep. I was talking about doing this interview earlier today with my wife, and I said Griffin Hollow, and she had no idea yep. what I was talking about. <laughs> when I say St. Clair College Hill, then people my age and people older know what I'm talking about. I have memories of going to the St. Clair College Hill when I was a kid. It was the only hill in Essex County, let's face it. Oh, right? for sure. Yeah, for sure. So we would go there, and we would go to Bogganing. And this was the early to mid-80s. Nowadays, parents are everywhere. Back then, it seems that it was just us kids. Oh, for sure. <laughs> we were... For sure. No, parents, I don't know. You were, you were gone for the day, and it was like, yeah, don't, yeah. don't bug me till supper time. Yeah, we, it seems like we were turned loose on the hill. We had our to- wooden <laughs> toboggan. The thing about this amphitheater was that all it was was a bunch of hills facing down towards a center point. So we were all yep. just zooming towards one another. And when you got yep. down into the middle, it's like it's no man's land, and you got to have your head on a swivel because they're coming at you in all directions oh it's true we were there one night uh, you start at the top and everybody's going to the thing and then this guy was we watched it it was like right beside us these two toboggans they, they smacked up and the one guy got a broken arm out of it yeah so they had the the center part which was kind of the tame side of the hill but they also had the outer parts and there was kind of these couple suicide runs that yep. went down and and you were getting awfully close to fence posts you could go right down into the parking lot where there was all these cars <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they couldn't get away with that kind of thing now. Oh, no, no, forget it. Believe it or not, that amphitheater, St. Clair College Hill, wasn't just there for our tobogganing. It was actually there for another reason, and they had made it for a concert venue. That was a little, just a little bit before my time. Now, I live close enough that you could hear the concerts. Okay. So in 1985, when they were playing there, when Honeymoon, was it Honeymoon Suite that was playing there? Honeymoon Suite, yeah. I could hear them from my house. I was maybe six years old. I was just old enough to know that my parents were slightly annoyed. <laughs> but you were actually at that concert, and you took a ton of photographs there that night. And, and we're looking at some of them now, but what was that venue like? It was really cool. It was an amphitheater. It was hills, and the stage was at the bottom of the hill. The band would play out to the hill, I guess. Of course, no seating in it, so it was all general admission, and you just sat wherever you felt like it. If you wanted to sit at the top of the hill and watch the, the whole thing, it was great. If you wanted to watch a little closer, you just walked up front. The sound would come back off the hill, and it was just a great sound, a great uh, venue. The shape of the amphitheater, they do that for a reason, so the audio must have been good it was very good if you search youtube you'll find a couple of clips from that actual the battle of the bands which was held earlier in the day well that's funny from the photographs that you sent i saw a guy with a camera i love looking at historical photos when you see a guy with a camera and you're always wondering to yourself where's that footage where's the film yeah exactly it wasn't just a regular concert what was it it was a battle of the bands a thing they they did back then where they would just get everybody together and the winner of the contest that night was going to open for honeymoon suite so they had 15 bands in there that day the chichkin brothers they were in a band called minx and they ended up winning the competition so they ended up opening for Honeymoon Suite. And for those who don't know, Honeymoon Suite, circa 1985, that would have been a yep. big deal, right? That was huge for the city. That was They had just released their first album in 1984, and that album had four chart hits, New Girl Now, Wave Babies, Stay in the Light, and Burning in Love. That was, it was huge. Honeymoon Suite was coming to Windsor. You still hear the name Honeymoon Suite now. Oh, absolutely. They still tour. How many people do you think they could squeeze into that amphitheater? The night of that Honeymoon Suite show, the place was pretty jammed. Probably uh, like a couple thousand people. I betcha. What was the crowd like that night? Were they well behaved? Yeah, they were very well behaved. No chaos, no no shenanigans, no nothing. Was there any drinking in the crowd? No, not that I could see. And if, believe me, it was so hot, I was looking for a beer. And from the photos that you showed me, it's very 1985. Yeah. I mean, there's no... There's <laughs> you can no, tell by their clothes. There's right? no mistake about it that these guys were <laughs> right from 1985. Oh, yes. 
I mean, sure. seriously, if you looked at that and you tried to guess what year that that came out, you would probably <laughs> guess within one or two years of that. Yeah, you'd be right in the ballpark, wouldn't you? I'm wondering what you looked like then, Tim. You know what? If you find that video, I walked right across the stage at one point. Oh. So uh, I had on a, one of those medical green shirts. Yeah. I, I remember this. And, and Levi's. I don't know why I wore Levi's because it was like 97 degrees in the shade. It was <laughs> everybody else wearing shorts. I got jeans on. That concert has the dubious distinction of being maybe the last concert that was ever held at the amphitheater? Yeah, to the best of my knowledge, Mike, it is the last concert that ever was there. No, there's a little history for you. I've also heard stories about, uh, now this is a big one, and my dad was at this, my dad was a police officer. He got to work the Ann Arbor Blues Festival in Exile. Oh my God, In Exile. Yeah, he was brought in there for security. So 1974, the Ann Arbor Blues Fest was kicked out of Ann Arbor, and they actually went to the St. Clair College Amphitheater. James Brown on the ticket is, is amazing. Sure. That's wow. another good story, and I'm always looking for somebody who was at sure. the Blues Festival in 1974 to talk about that. James Brown doesn't get any bigger than that, really. You know? <laughs> Tim Cornette, thank you so much for doing this. It's always a pleasure to talk Thanks to you. Thanks very much, Mike. It's always a pleasure speaking with you as well. Huh?